All right, now we're gonna look at answering questions and how to answer cross-examination questions. So the first thing I wanna go over is what to do if you don't understand a question. Because you're inevitably gonna get asked a question and sometimes it's even the fault of the asker. They, they uh, word the question strangely or it's a strange question and you don't understand what you're being asked. In this case, it's okay to say, uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Could you please rephrase the question? It's perfectly acceptable for you to say that. So that's what you do if you don't understand the question. Um, just something preliminary before we move on. But now I wanna look at some other tips for when you're asked, answering questions. And the first tip is always look confident, even if you aren't. Always look confident and always look like everything is fine, even if everything is going horribly wrong. I've been in several cross-examination sessions where I was totally being uh, creamed during the session and the, the, the person who was asking the questions was definitely winning. And many people have, but the secret here is sometimes the judge isn't actually paying attention during the cross-examination. And in fact, that goes during the whole round. Sometimes the judges don't pay attention for whatever reason, maybe they zone out. So basically though, if you look confident and you keep on an air of everything is fine, I'm doing great, nothing is wrong, sometimes you can still win the round. The judge won't even notice that the opponent is totally destroying you. So you always wanna look confident. If you don't look confident and you begin looking worried, that's gonna send a signal loud and clear, blaring to the judge that you're losing and you do not wanna do that. You wanna send a signal that you're winning because many times the judges don't, aren't paying attention or many times they don't even know what's going on, especially if you get a, a newer judge, they don't know what's going on and they, they go, sometimes they do go off by how confident you look. So the more confident you look, the better. Look confident even if you aren't and even if, even if everything's burning down and everything's going terrible, just look like everything's absolutely fine, even if it's not. All right, um, in a similar vein, uh, to act confident, almost act like you're the teacher and your opponent is a student asking questions for clarification from you. Have sort of that air. I mean, don't be cocky. You never wanna be cocky during any point of the debate round, but um, one good way to look confident is act like you're the teacher and your opponent's asking questions, but you know, don't look down on your uh, opponent. Um, when you're answering cross-examination questions, you wanna be honest. You don't wanna lie, you don't wanna be deceptive, but at the same time, try not to give everything away because obviously you don't wanna do that. Be honest, but don't say more than you need to. Don't give yourself away. Don't give everything away. Um, now, when your op opponent is asking questions, of course you're gonna wanna disagree with many of the questions because you know the opponent is trying to poke holes in your case and he's gonna ask questions with the intent of uh, proving why you're wrong. And you need to argue that you're correct, so you need to disagree with some of the things he says, obviously. But don't disagree with absolutely everything your opponent says. This is a very common mistake. Don't disagree with everything your opponent says. Um, this actually makes you appear unreasonable or like you're afraid of being trapped. And it, it shows a lack of confidence and a lack of confidence in your position. So don't disagree with absolutely everything. If your opponent asks you, do you believe that life is valuable? Don't say, no, no, life is not valuable. You should not do that. Use your common sense. You should be concerned about getting trapped and you should be careful, but don't be too careful. And also, don't show that you're concerned about getting trapped. So don't, don't show that you're nervous. When they ask you a question, don't pause and go, uh, no. Uh, don't show that you're, you're trying to avoid being trapped because if you try too hard to avoid being trapped, it's gonna show and that, that, that tells the judge, why are they so afraid? It must be because something's wrong with their argument. So you don't wanna do that. You only wanna disagree with stuff that you think could hurt you. If the question appears harmless, just answer it like you normally would, essentially. Um, but the fifth thing is if you're in a chain, or I guess the third thing is if you're in a chain of questions, like we talked about, and you feel like your opponent is pulling you into some sort of trap, and even though the questions haven't become harmful to you yet, you can tell that, there are, that you, the opponent's about to get you, you should try to get out of that chain of questioning because they are leading you into uh, a trap. And one common trick that they have when you're in a chain of questioning, people try to get you to answer yes or no. And that's another thing you should do when you're asking questions, try to get yes or no answers. Um, but when you're, being, when you're answering questions, your opponent, the asker, is gonna want you to answer yes or no. And this is a tactic because if you answer yes or no, it's actually much easier for them to trap you because it simplifies the possible answers down from all these range of answers to just two possible answers. So don't answer yes or no. Don't answer yes or no. You can say sometimes or it depends on the situation or in most cases, yes. However, don't give yes or no answers though. You wanna explain your answers. Don't give one word yes or no answers. Explain your, your answers in depth and give a, a, like a sentence in reply sometimes. Just explain everything, spell everything out. This actually helps you to avoid being trapped because whereas the opponent wants you to say yes, you might add yes, blah, 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 
and the, the blah, 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 there might be something in there that, 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 um, that ruins their chain of questioning. So you wanna, you wanna make your answers really uh, specific, not just short and to the point. You wanna, you wanna give fairly, not, not long answers, but longer than just a yes or no. Um, if they're asking you a question and the answer to that question was given in your case, you wanna stand firm, give the same answer that was in your case. If the judge or the opponent notices you change your position in the middle of cross-examination, that doesn't bode well for you. It, it looks like you're contradicting yourself. Um, in the same, similar vein of what we were just talking about, not using yes or no answers, some words you could use are but in general in most cases. So if they ask you, does free trade, does fair trade harm prosperity? You could argue in general, however, there are not, not all the time. It depends on, or in most cases, yes. However, so you, you leave yourself kind of a way out in case they're trying to trap you with your answer. And that's another benefit of not using yes or no answers. If you say yes or no, it's yes all the way or no all the way. There's no wiggle room. If you make your answer not yes or no, there's some wiggle room and you can kind of escape. You can kind of escape out of that trap. All right, now let's look at what happens if you don't know the answer to a question or you don't know how to answer a question or you feel like you're, you're getting trapped. There are a few strategies you can use when you, you don't want to answer a question or if you, you don't know the answer to a question or if that answer will, will hurt you if you just answer it verbatim. Um, one thing is you can say, well, that answer to that question really depends on blah, blah, blah. Um, you don't want to just say, though, the answer depends. It depends because they're always going to ask, it depends on what? And then you have to answer that. It's so always to say, it depends on blah, blah, blah. So if, if you don't know the answer to a question, you, that depends. The second thing you could say is, could you give me an example? And this especially, these all especially apply to questions where they're, they're asking a question and, yeah, you really don't know the answer. Sometimes you might not even understand the, the question or you just can't see uh, the answer. So if they ask you a question you don't understand the answer to, say the answer to that question really depends on the situation. Could you give me a specific example? And that, this is especially helpful for very broad and vague questions that they're just vaguely asking about you know, a blanket statement. In this scenario, what would you do or what's the right thing to do? And if you wanna simplify it, make it more, more specific and make it easier to answer, then you could ask them to give a specific example. Because that's uh, one of the problems with vague questions is a lot of time you'll be asked a vague question. You don't know which way is the right way to respond. If I answer yes, are they going to trap me? If I answer no, are they going to trap me? And you can't see which is the correct answer. That's when you ask this question. Could you give me a specific example? They'll get more specific. Then it'll be easier to see what the correct answer will be so that you don't, um, you don't, uh, you don't shoot yourself in the foot. And this right here is a little hack that I actually used once and it actually worked. And you should try not to do this because this is a little strange, but um, it is allowed in the rules. So say there are five or 10 seconds left as, as you're doing cross-examination, there are five or 10 seconds left and um, they ask you a really hard question or a question you don't want to answer. Ask them in those last five seconds to rephrase the question. And they'll rephrase the question or they'll start to, but they're not going to have enough time to finish. Or by the time they're done, time will be run out and you, you won't maybe you won't have to answer. But try not to do this. Hopefully what would happen is um, um, they would, they'll, when, you, when you ask them to rephrase the question in those five questions, they'll say, never mind, we're out of time. If they do repeat the question, um, the polite thing to do would be to answer it anyway, even if, after time's run out. So hopefully the hope here is that they won't ask, the, they won't rephrase the question and they'll just let the whole thing go. But again, that's last resort and you really shouldn't try to do that. But if you really need to, um, I, it, it does work some of the time. All right, and the last thing, no matter how hard you try, you're inevitably gonna get trapped at some point and your opponent's gonna force you to say something that goes completely against your position. He's gonna get you to destroy your own case or your value and don't get flustered. Don't show that, don't let it show that your opponent just did something to uh, trap you. Don't let it show on your face. Don't let it show in your mannerisms because the judge is watching you. And again, sometimes the judge doesn't understand what's going on, but if they see you getting flustered, they know you're not doing well and they'll vote for your opponent. So always remain calm, maintain your countenance, confidence, always act as if nothing is wrong and that your opponent's questions aren't harming your case at all, even if they are and everything's going awful. Um, don't cringe uh, uh, at, at, the, at the podium. After a cross act is over and you turn around with your back to the judge to go back to the table, then you can cringe if you want, which is what I usually do, but don't let the judge see you cringe. And now it's time for you to begin compiling a good list of cross X questions that you're gonna ask in, in, in the rounds now that we've done with this section. So we wanna have some pre-prepared questions. You do wanna come up with questions on the fly in the round specific to the opponent's case, but you also, 
it's good to have some pre-written cross-ex questions that are generic that you can ask every round. So I have a handout here on the class website which you can use to sort of uh, make some cross-ex questions. And that concludes the section on cross-examination. And if you want more resources for cross-examination, if you want to explore this a little deeper, there are some books that you can buy on cross-examination. Uh, Monument Publishing has some books. Maybe I'll include a link to that uh, as well. So uh, that's, that's all for this section.